She said... Shut it! One of the men in the field said. And she did. Claire had looked up and out into the yard at the green corn stalks and wished she was not in the house. But a small piece of glass in front of her had to stay shut so that the flies were not getting their food. She had burned the soup, so she'd had to start over. <laughs> they would not eat burned food. <clears throat> she fed the men and took their bowls to wash. For hours. <laughs> her white rag now gray. Her hands stung. <laughs> Deep in the sink, their cracks and cuts filled with harsh soap. <laughs> the men stomped in from the field, dust falling through the house. She would have to clean that too. <laughs> Jim did not like mess in his house. <laughs> Claire sighed. Sweat fell from her face and hit the tin sink where she washed. The sun went down and she left the sink, her dress cold against her skin. Jim came in from the fields. Come to bed, he said. And she did! The next day, Claire fed the men and took their plates to wash. One came to the door, and she took her gaze from the sink. There's a fly in my stew, he said, as he let the plate tip from his hands. It fell to the floor with a crash. Claire picked up the shards from the floor as drops of blood fell from her hands. But it was her job to wash the plates. So she did. <laughs> Do as others as you would have them do unto you. 
Don't have a thy neighbor's wife. Don't use a condom. Sleep with your two daughters if you think you're the last people on earth. Genesis 1934, true story. <laughs> they should stop. I have one question for you, Belle. Do you realize how much drinking there is in the Bible? No, hear me out. Um, look at Noah. After the flood, Noah and God had a brief conversation in which God asked Noah and his sons to repopulate the earth. Oh, yeah! All right! Nice! Booyah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, like five guys. But I'm sure they enjoyed it. And in return, God says that he never again will send a flood that will destroy the entire earth and every living entity in it. My be. <laughs> which was probably a good call. At least until the invention of the pet rock, which pretty much marked the end of reason and judgment as we know it. <laughs> So, after the flood, the first thing that Noah does is plant a vineyard, grow grapes, make wine, and drink it out of celebration. Celebration! <laughs> I mean, if I had just lived in one apocalypse and God told me there wouldn't be a sequel, I'd want to drink too, right? So, after drinking, a super smash Noah takes up all of his clothes and passes out. In honor of God's glory. <laughs> and I quote, As Noah lay drunken and naked inside his tent, his sons came in and were somehow undisturbed by the fact that their father was plastered and knew. And so they covered him with a blanket. <laughs> and God rejoiced. <laughs> nice! Booyah! <laughs> okay, maybe a slight paraphrase, but look it up. Genesis 9, 21. Also, can we just talk about the kinds of miracles that Jesus performed? Curing the sick, healing the blind, enriching the lives of everyone around him, and... Slap the bag, bitches! <laughs> Naked 
body, I am in essence giving the world a glance at God. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm sorry that you found us drunk and naked in Andy's pool. I hope it's some consolation that I now feel closer to the Lord. You know, why is it that adults are allowed to experience a special religious rite of passage while impressionable children who are still forming their opinions are denied it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Kesha would agree, even if you don't. You know, Reverend Jeffrey says that there's more joy in heaven over one repenting sinner than a million moral people. And I know your precinct might not feel the same way, but search your hearts for some divine forgiveness and inspiration that will allow you to revoke or at least minimize my $200 fine. Guys, I don't have $200. <laughs> Peace and love, Cain, Abel, Jehovah, Crocker.